Surprise. My uh my headphones are backwards. Hold on. Your cans aren't working. There we go. What up, Stokers? Boom clap. Oh, what up, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad Kroger. That intro song is it gives me a woody every time. I'm gonna be Frank. Dude, I can see you pushing through the wood here. I'm gonna be a dude desk, named I mean. Frank. Yeah, yeah, nice. dude. <laughs> wood on wood. Yeah. Um this is episode sixty eight. I'm with my dog Jean Thomas. What up? Boom clap, Stokers for a second time. Boom clap for a third time. And uh, guys, before we begin, this podcast is brought to you by our dogs at Manscaped. I'm rocking their t-shirt right now. You were wearing it last night. I was wearing it last night at a stand-up show, just letting everyone know that I trimmed my pubes. Yeah, because on the back it says Manscaped. Chad's rotating. Um, Wait, let me see it. Manscaped, your balls will thank you. And they have thanked me because my trims have been pubed. And uh, they're like, wow, dude, this is a good, this is like your lawn. Right. And you mowed it. It's um, nice. Yeah, I used the guys at Manscaped. So they're the leading in ball trimming. So leading guys in ball trimming. Way to go, dude. If you're going to be something, <laughs> be number one. Yeah. And that's what Manscaped does. And that's why they're on this podcast. I actually am friends with the guy who runs the ninth best ball trimming company. Who's that? Uh, Rodney. Oh, you, oh, dude, yeah, I've met Rodney. Yeah, you did meet him that one time. Yeah. We were Fred's. Dude, yeah. he's a solid guy. He's a solid guy, but, um, you know, every time I ask him about the ball trimming company, he's like, we're ninth. Yeah. And I can tell it, it bugs him a you little bit. You can see the pain in yeah, his eyes. Yeah, because he's only like 10. But he's a really caring dude, and we should probably give him a shout out, because, like, when I first met him, he was just like, like, right off the bat, he's like, how are your nuts, dude? Yeah, oh, he cares about his job. Yeah. Yeah, like, he always... Like genuinely love nuts. Yeah. Like when we were growing up and stuff, he was just like, "Dude, I think balls are the best. I love yeah. seeing all your ball sacks in the yeah. uh, locker room." And he like knew like just he knew his shit. Yeah. And so I think that's why he's in the right line of work. But I just want to see him bump up those rankings. Yeah. No, I heard uh, he he was watching Jackass with a bunch of guys, and like every time they did nut shots, you know, he'd have to leave the room. Yeah. It, it upset him so much. He was like, "This isn't." This is an atrocity. Dude, it was crazy, too, because they would show the nuts before the guy's face. And yeah. he's like, I got to get out of here before they smash Steve-O's nuts. And yeah. I was like, how'd you know those were Steve-O's nuts? Yeah. And he'd just look at me and be like, what? Yeah. Like, I know. Of course I know. Like, he has, like, ESPN on nuts. Yep. Yeah, Rodney's a good dude, you know. I, I've never met someone who cared about pubes so much, but. Yep. Hire him at Manscaped. Manscaped. Yeah, Manscaped. Reach out to Rodney. I think he's still in San Clemente. Mm-hmm. Um... He's got great Nine pubes. Four nine for life. Yeah, he's got great pubes. He'll show them if you want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're you basically. It's like a, you're looking at like um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan's chin, mm-hmm. or Chaz Chaz Dean. Do you know Chaz Dean? Is that the transsexual porn star? No, that's Chaz Dino. What up, Chaz Dino? Chaz Dean. You, you may see him around like Hollywood on billboards. He's like a well-known hairstylist oh okay oh i do know that guy yeah yeah he looks like jeffrey d morgan yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but this guy's got Chaz dean level nuts right that's what's up yeah he'll accentuate your dong oh and have we started uh, are we recording yeah okay sweet oh sweet um also before we begin the stoker reached out about her boyfriend t cake boss it's his birthday so what up dude a a very happy birthday to t cake boss i believe his name is the king yeah, the king of cake. And, yep, and the boss and himself. He's got all the high status names right there. The guy's just a legend. Yeah, I've been saying high status a lot lately. It's because you're high status, dude. <laughs> dude, that's like the best possible perception of that. Yeah. My dog. Yeah. Thank you, dude. I mean, you wouldn't say high status if you were low status. You're let. Yeah, you wouldn't want to talk about it. Yeah. 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 You're you, letting me off the hook big time, man. You'd be I appreciate ashamed. It. Yeah. You'd be like, status doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, status. Which it shouldn't. I remember one time I got into like these YouTube videos. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was like deep in the dating world, you know, and yeah. I'm like, how can I like, Do how, better. how can I step up my game yeah, a little course. bit? So I watched these YouTube videos. This guy, don't check him out, Stokers, because he's a massive douche. <laughs> Do you, yeah, don't put his name out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jason Capital. <laughs> 
Wait, but kids are gonna watch that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're probably gonna watch it. Yeah, they're gonna like him. He's yeah. so like, uh, he's like, he's like, you gotta be high status, okay? If they stare at you, you stare at them until they break, okay? You just gotta keep staring at them. You gotta be indifferent. You gotta not care, okay? But yeah. how do you believe in those things if you don't believe in them? Yeah, I mean, you, they're just going to take you in, like, the completely wrong direction. You're yeah. going to call someone a dumbass and think it's sexy. And it's, yeah. It's not. You know what I realized after, like, all this, like, trying and stuff? I'm like, who gives a fuck, you know? I totally agree. Because people are like, yeah, you, um, you, they have to text you 80% of the time, okay? If they're texting you and you're initiating texting, less than, or you're t- initiating texting more than 20% of the time, She's going to leave you for another dude who's more alpha. I'm like, what, dude? Well, and if I want to text her, I'm just going to text her. I don't give a fuck anymore. And things don't like most things don't work out. Yeah. Like things, you're going to fail more than you're going to succeed. So like I think people are trying to find like a way to like never fail. It's like, dude, it's just part of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just it's like the it sucks. Yeah. But it's just it's just the way it is. Yeah. You learn from pain. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you have a breakup, you're like, wow, this is going to be great for my acting class. If yeah. You're, if you're in that. Oh, it's fodder. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in like business or accounting, I'm not, you can channel it some way into like taxes. Nora Ephron, she said everything is fodder. Yeah. But then at the end of her life, she didn't tell anybody she was sick and she died like surprising everybody. Is that good or bad? I don't know. It's interesting. To yeah. Me. When you're yeah. telling me about that, I'm like, is, <laughs> does that make everything she said a lie or is that cool? I think... I think she felt weird making death fodder. Yeah. Because why do I think this? I got to just sit in this and try to have this a clear thought. Yeah, I'm trying to absorb it too. I just keep thinking about pubes. Dude, uh, we went to San Diego last night. We had a stand up show. That was fun. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. That was the most people who have ever come to see me do comedy. Yeah. Us do comedy. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I think we have a lot of stokers down in San Diego. Yeah. Strong good dude. Stokers Shout out to all the stokers who said, what up? Yeah, what up, dude? It was good to meet all you guys. Yeah. It was intimate. It was intimate. You're like five inches from someone's face. You're like, hello. Yeah. This one guy was hammered, and he's just like, he's like, hello, the pod. And I'm like, I'm like, thank you so much, dude. <laughs> Can you like move back like an inch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I love you from here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the, everyone was super nice, super supportive, and... uh and then we met some like coral safe sunscreen guys. You mind if I just shout them? Shout them out. Uh, they're called Surf Dirt. Surf Dirt. Thank you guys for making coral safe sunscreen. You guys are looking out for the coral, and that's what it's all about. Have you noticed this ever when you like meet somebody that um, they'll uh, they'll not know how to say they like you, so they come in kind of like aggressive. Mm-hmm. Like it's it goes back to the status thing. Like yeah. Uh, where they're, they're a high status person, so they can't come in and be like, dude, like I'm really a, a big fan. They'll be like, what up, dude? I'm a huge fan, not because I'm gay, but you'd probably like that. Yeah. But yeah, what up? I, I like the pod. Yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. You're like, dude, it's, it's all good, dude. When they try yeah. to like give you shit, and they're, yeah. you're, like, you're like, they're like, nice jeans, idiot. And you're like. Why Why are you insulting me? Yeah, yeah. It, it is, I, I, I meet guys like that all the time. It's hilarious. What's up, queer? Yeah, they're like, what's up, dude? So you're gay, huh? Yeah. That's cool, I guess. I yeah. like your podcast. Yeah. You're like, all right, thanks. A lot of dudes here. You, can, you guys like dong? Uh, what? Yeah, you probably need some lead in your pencil. Good job tonight. <laughs> like, I met this one guy who he didn't, he didn't know me at the show, and he comes in kind of like, he's like, kind of hammered. I was just in the back sort of by myself, you know, getting ready for the show. And he just kind of stumbles in. He's like, oh, what's up, dude? I play football. <laughs> I'm like, nice. And he's just like, he's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I'm doing stand up. He's like, oh, you go on stage? Wow, oh, oh, dude. Like, you know, whenever I go on, like, like I play football, but like public speaking, man, is, and then comedy is like crazy. Like, that's that's a whole un- another level. I'm like, yeah, it's it's a lot. And then we were like bonding over that. You know, he's like, because every time I go into a game, it's just like, I get so much, I get so scared. But then once I'm in the first down, I'm in it. And I'm like, yeah, for sure. And then out of nowhere, he's like, Hey, do you listen to the Joe Rogan experience? I was like, yeah. He's like, I learned so much from that dude. <laughs> I, had, I had a couple of people bring up Joe Rogan to me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny how we, <laughs> you're like, I'm learning so much, dude. Someone told me that they're like, I only listen to the Joe Rogan podcast and your podcast. That's cool. Like, That's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Do you listen to the Graham Hancock episode? Not yet. 
You gotta listen to that. Yeah, I've heard. I, I bought his book. It's mind blowing. Oh, uh, I haven't read it, but the podcast. Yeah, that's there. what I mean. What uh, do you talk about? Just about how you know archaeology is not accurate. Yeah, it's not what we think it is. Whoa. You know, like there's because of like comets hitting the Earth, all these cataclysmic events. You know that that there were possibly way we our existence may have started in Earlier. America instead of like Mesopotamia and um there's like so many um because there's like a huge event twelve thousand years ago and then there may be like a lot more advanced civilizations but because of like like an asteroid hitting the earth <clears throat> it caused like an ice age or like sea levels to rise so like these these civilizations just got completely destroyed um and then there's a lot of evidence of like civilizations in like the amazon rainforest and the amazon rainforest might be just be like a huge sort of man-made garden so it's cool the amazon rainforest might be man-made basically yeah that's what he's saying there might have been like 20 million people living there at one point if we're wrong about this like how much other stuff could we be wrong about i think we're all wrong about everything what makes you think that because you look back like 200 years ago, they didn't know anything. And why are we so sure of everything right now? That's a good point. We just keep moving forward and you're like, oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's why when people are like talking about like the universe and stuff, I'm like, I'm like, I don't. You're like, wait till next year when that <laughs> idea is replaced by another idea. Yeah. I'm like, all right, Neil. But some ideas last. Like. Yeah. Like gravity. Gravity. That's what I was going to say. Like he seems to have knocked it out of the park on that one. He did a stellar job with gravity. What are the other big theories that we define ourselves by? You know, I think I think we'll discover is new dimensions and kind of realities, sort of like diving deeper into that, like something beyond our dimension. I just think there's so much more out there that we can't perceive with our given senses. We there's no way we're perceiving everything that's out there. Right. There's got to be more. I think. I definitely think there's more. I just don't know if there's any good news out there. I I, I, yeah. I choose to believe that it's all like angels <laughs> tickling my balls. Yeah, I think Manscaped. it's just like it's like a cruel indifference, and then that just multiplies out forever. That sucks. It's not the best. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people are pretty cool though. You yeah. know, we fuck it up a lot, but like, <laughs> people are my favorite part. But yeah, I think the the universe is like. We're so small, you I, know? I think it's just all, I think it's just new forms of love everywhere. That's beautiful. Yeah. Aaron, what do you think about existence? Yeah, Aaron, what's your take on existence? I can't talk about existence in the room with somebody else and not, not get their take. I mean, sometimes it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, man. Dude, that's a good point. It does suck. But if animals in the animal kingdom did more breathing exercises, they'd be a little more pumped. Dude, um, <laughs> what, a, what, what, what were you telling me about oxalates? So I listened to this podcast on oxalates, and oxalates are basically, they're found in spinach, almonds, beets, raspberries, um, stuff like that. I, I don't know. I need to look at the other list because I'm like, is spirulina on there? It's found in kale. I'm like, is spirulina on there? Is wheatgrass in there? Because that's in the green juice I drink. And uh, they're basically poisonous. Um, and they, they, it's sort of their, these foods are new and they're introduced recently, but they contain a lot of oxalates. I need to dive deeper into like why they're poisonous, but they basically cause, um, they put your body into distress, which causes anxiety and, um, all that kind of stuff. And then, like, people get, end up getting really sick later on in life from them. Do you, do you, like, how can you be so certain about diet, but, like, won't those ideas change again in a year? Like, will oh, oxalates yeah. in five years be, like, good for you? I don't think oxalates will ever be Oh, is oxalate a bad thing? Yeah. Or the, the food just, that causes them, rather? The, yeah. Um... Yeah, it's it's always changing. Like I'm always, I'm always, I'm never like certain on diet. Like right. for sure, I just sort of go by what makes me feel good. And you look great. Oh, thank you. Um, so do you. Um, thank you. 
Yeah, you've been eating no carbs, right? I've been no carbs for a couple of weeks, dude. Yeah. Dude, I might be, I just like, I might be embarrassed to say it, but I might be keto. Yeah. Why are you embarrassed to say it? Because I just don't like labels. Whatever. That's my own like self-consciousness. I just like. Yeah. I, with diet, I, I just go with what makes me feel good. I don't think there's one set thing like right. carnivore, uh, paleo. I, it's whatever, whatever you can feel, I guess. Listen to your body. But I have noticed whenever I eat almond butter um, or almond milk, I do feel shitty. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, you know your body. You're very in touch with it. Yeah, so I was like, I was like, oh, almonds. That makes sense because whenever I eat almond butter and chocolate, dark chocolate, oxalates, I do feel kind of grumpy afterwards. How many things are we allowed to eat? <sighs> Hot dogs on a stick. That's it. Yeah. No, but seriously, like, what are we, what are we allowed to eat? Just meat uh, and veggies, right? I think so. That's it. Meat and broccoli. Yeah, or chicken and veggies. I guess if you're vegan, just veggies, and yeah. you get your protein from like synthetic sources. I can't uh, do that. No, that doesn't work. Not for me, at least. Synthetic, it can't be good. Like well, some of them. You don't think man is capable of like no. artificially producing a no, healthy food? N- nature is king. I agree, it's king. But I'm not. I'm not letting Bill Gates decide how I'm going to get my muscle mass. Okay. But what if he's good at it? <laughs> he's. Look at him. Look at his physique. Okay. I, I know he's not like traditionally like a beast, but if you look at his results, they're beast-like. Yeah, he created Windows, but I'm not going to rely on him. To help my quads gain more mass. What if it was like a buff dude? Um, yeah, I mean, Troy Casey, <laughs> I'll listen to him because he's the most tan and jacked guy I've seen. And not in like a gross jacked, he's like toned. He does drink his own piss. Maybe you should. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you mention it, so do I. No, you don't. No. Why didn't you admit that? That's like me with the keto. See, there's levels to this. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, dude, I'm embarrassed to say I'm keto. I'm like, well, I'm embarrassed to say I've been drinking my own piss. <laughs> yeah, there is, yours is a little more, I guess, normal to be embarrassed about. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Dude, did you see this article about uh, Mark Zuckerberg starting a podcast? No. Yeah. He's starting a podcast? Yeah, he's already got two episodes out. I haven't listened to it. Interesting. What's it about? It's about his thoughts on how society and technology are going to evolve. Interesting. It's pretty broad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll be interested to hear that. I bet you it's going to blow. That's what I was thinking. That's my prediction. It's going to yeah. blow. I'm like, again, with these tech guys, you know, stay in your lane. Dude, that's so funny. Yeah. That's what my GF told me. Really? I was like, what do you think about the Zuckerberg podcast? She's like, stay in your lane. Yeah. I was like, okay, nice. Dude, yeah. How's the GF? She's great. Yeah. Yeah. How's the, uh, any details? She's just smart, dude. Like, we were driving back from San Diego yesterday, mm-hmm. and I was driving, and she's like, are you tired? I was like, yeah. She's like, let's get some tea. And then I got some tea. And then we're driving, and I'm like, I think I'm going to go all the way back to L.A. She's like, let's stay at your mom's in San Clemente. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, you're right. And then we got there, and she was like, drink some water. And I was like, yeah, good. <laughs> and she's just super fun. She's yeah. just, like, rocking out the whole way down. That's cool. Yeah. To music? Yeah, she's just in the groove. She's so locked into the moment. That's yeah. fine. What'd you guys listen to? We switched off. I did like my stuff <clears throat> is like pop top forty, but then she started questioning my music taste because I took her to a pink concert. And yeah. like she likes stuff that is like adjacent to pink. Like I don't think the difference between like another pop star like Miley Cyrus and Pink is like miles apart. I think they're just wearing different costumes slightly. But um I mean Pink does have some cheesy lyrics. But they're anthems. They play well live. Yeah. And uh, so I was trying to show her some like more like, uh, you know, like good taste stuff. Like I was playing her talking heads and the replacements and like just uh, some foundational music for me. You know, I, I maybe it's because I get really insecure about playing music in front of like a new friend or like a um, a new girlfriend or whatever. Because I feel like they can judge you so hard. Yeah, they do. Yeah, you know, like, it's like, if you want to play, like, because a lot of times I like, like, high energy, like, kind of EDM, because it just puts me in a good mood, you know? And I envision, like, being on Molly at Coachella. And But I'm not going to play that. You, you don't put on, like, 
Tiesto right away. You know what I mean? I guess they're just snobs about music and I'm snobs about movies and you're snobs about like health. And yeah. then like, we're just like, we have like our, yeah. our snob department. Yeah. Yeah. But music, but, <laughs> but music people need to chill. I'm like, I'm like, um, I guess I'll just put on like nineties hip hop cause that'll make me look cool. Yeah. I do like nineties hip hop, but. Well, well, and Sal's like, she's like, I'm into, I'm into punk rock music. She's yeah. putting all this music, and I was mad at her for judging me. I was like, this isn't punk rock, dude. This is pop, okay? Yeah. What was it, like Fall Out Boy? It's like Taking Back Sunday and, like, <laughs> like you know, great music. I love it. But yeah, yeah. I'm like, this isn't, like, genius compared to Pink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the – yeah. I don't even know if her definition of punk – and the funny thing is she likes SoCal music, and she's telling me what's good SoCal music. Yeah. And, you know, she's she knows more about music than I do, but – I'm I'm from SoCal. I know yeah. more about SoCal, honey. Yeah. Kisses for you. I uh Yeah, it's with that with the music and then um Yeah, it's not like you know, if I'm like with my GF and she like gets pasta, I'm not going to like shame her. Right. You know, I'm just going to be like feel bad for your brain fog that's going to come in. Yeah. It's yeah, it's more like pity. <laughs> yeah. It's like all right. Enjoy, you know, having low energy for the better part of a day. Oh, are you grumpy? Do you have anxiety? Figures. It's like, wow, you know, it'd be nice to um, be able to be at the, this beach and not be so susceptible to sunburn, but you decided to eat sunflower oil in your pasta last night, and uh, now your skin's going to get fucked up. Is that real? I don't know. It sounded real. Thanks. Is that real? Do you know and you're not telling me? My my brother told me that. Oh, nice. So it is real. <laughs> I texted my brother yesterday. I was like, I was like, bro, what's going on with oxalates? I gotta get off these oxalates. And he's like, he's like, haha. How do you know about oxalates? And yeah, you do. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I've noticed when I eat chocolate or almond butter, I get irritable. He's like, oh, dog, you can't eat almond butter. Almonds are toxic. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I think we. Guys, we're going to take some questions now, and for the first time in a while, well, I guess we had a guest last week who was over the Skype, but we're going to have a call-in question. Also, I had a, I misspoke last week. I said Amos Bouchard was our first published author, and then I realized we had just talked to Howie Mandel, who had a book out. Oh, yeah. But Amos was an author first, I guess is what I was saying. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yo, Cousin Chad. Cuz. This is my cousin Evan. What up? Thank you for calling into the pod. What up, Evan? <laughs> JT, the man. Aw, oh, dude, you're too kind. You're the man. How are you doing? What up, fellas? Good, good. Just a uh, first-time caller, long-time listener. I figured I got to chime in. Oh, dude, thank, dude yeah. thank you for calling in. Yeah, we appreciate. Much appreciate. Where's Strider? Uh, I think he's doing ballet right now. Yeah, I and mean, he's just getting prep to enjoy his night with his gf yeah he got yoga some, yoga he got some new shoes what, nice. what kind of shoes were they i didn't see him he threw out his converse so i'm sure he's rocking those new shoes probably performing really well oh this was he got like chucks right Is yeah this from the, well, he threw out yeah. his chucks but i think he's uh, he got like some similar shoes but i think he's gonna have high performance in those Evan, so that's the long and short of it with Strider. What's up with you, dog? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. Hey, real quick, though, just have Strider, like, give me a call later. I just got some life advice for him, real oh, quick. Su oh, sweet. Sweet, yeah, for and, sure. Is, and I assume Joe's not there either? No. Nah. Oh. What's Joe doing? Is he doing eight-minute abs? I haven't seen him. Oh, man. But if he's at home, he's either doing abs or eating. Nice. Or laundry, laundry probably, too. Oh, he's digging into he, that. Yeah, he tell. does a lot of laundry, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, guys, so... Call it in, checking in, want to discuss a couple points, but I got a big question for you. You know, that's why we call in, right? You guys are the experts. Yes, yeah. sir. And so, Chad, a couple points real quick just to get the family business out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, tell your mom hi for me, please. I will, for sure. And actually, just want to corroborate a few stories because I know you've been talking about it over the last few weeks. Yeah. And specifically, just want to like, give you know i've been involved with a lot of these things especially something i want to make sure like your readers understand how important it was around the uh the bag tag rules in the family oh dude oh, and, this would be good to amplify them. yeah yeah and and i can also say that like i was on the losing side of the intergalactic crotch wars of 1997 i remember that are you all right <laughs> 
So this is back when like Chad was still in like the pull and pud phase of his life. And he came at me with, you know, when they have like axe throwing competitions where people like put both hands over their heads and they're throwing axes at like, you know, stumps that are on the, on the wall, like 20 feet away. Yeah. yeah. Great outdoor games. Chad, I, so I'm in the hammock at their house. I was having a nap. I was in a really good spot. And, and Chad and his older brother, Mark, they came at me with this like double hammer crotch down slam when I was, my eyes were closed Damn. and, uh, it kind of affected like our relation immediately, but I think we're over it now, but it, it happened. So I just want to make sure you guys knew that was real. I, I remember that. And I, I sincerely apologize. I was watching a lot of power Rangers at the time <laughs> and, uh, I knew I had to take it to your nuts, but I hope they're better now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we got we got through it all right um yeah well it, it's safe to say like as he said earlier he he did really like getting beat up by me and his older brothers that was a thing i did um so we had these constant go-to moves that chad you could probably lay into this a little more in detail maybe another time but the gas pedal was a strong move to oh. put on you oh i gotta bring that back that was great the gas pedal's good, and the ball and chain was always just like a finisher <laughs> that you couldn't even like. <laughs> what what does that entail? <laughs> so, do you want to do you want to explain the uh, both moves? Yeah, I'll go quick. So uh, the gas pedal is pretty simple. You got the kid on their back, and you just take both their legs and spread them open, and just take your foot and just step on the gas right in the middle of their <laughs> little bean bags, and just go to work on them. And it's really hard to get out of when you're holding their ankles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I did those in high school and Brilliant. it was not well received. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the second one's a little more complex, but you got to get them on their, like if they're on their all fours or on their knees, you grab, you reach through the back of their legs and grab their front hand and pull it through their legs. So you're kind of dragging them like ball and chain across <laughs> the, across the ground. Nice. Yeah, we, it, it, <laughs> it was, those were painful, but I think we all, our relations all got deeper and stronger because of it. For sure, for yeah. sure. Um, and then I want to go in a little bit of a dad mode and like a proud cousin mode for you guys because uh, JT, as Chad may tell you, like I've been ride or die since day one with him My dog. and getting your guys' comedy careers off the ground. I've seen I've seen a lot of early stuff and to see where you guys are now, I'm super, super proud of you oh, guys. Oh, thank you so both. much, man. Thank you so much, cuz. For sure. Really appreciate it. For sure. It. So awesome. a couple of things. I think Chad took some advice early. I want to take more credit than I probably do. <laughs> but I said, <laughs> I love, I, I said, you got to keep it positive. Mm -hmm. Stoke Nation is your thing. Yes. You guys made early decisions on not to mess around with any misogynistic stuff. Got that out of the way early. I think you checked a few people early. And since then, it's all smooth sailing. Oh, thank you. Because you guys are dude. crushing it. Thank, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Keep it up. What up, dude? And thank you. Positive is the, is the path. Yes. And I'm trying to take... What you guys do, cold showers, green juice, Are you even Stoke doing that? Rebels. Oh, that's awesome. This is, I'm bringing it to like the early 40s dad set. That's my, that's my mish. Hell yeah. That's what I'm Legend. talking about. So I'm spreading the word. That's <laughs> awesome, man. Dude. Dude, thank you. Yeah. Really appreciate that. That's what's For up. sure. And uh, one comparison I have, because I think this hopefully applies you guys seen the movie The Dirt on Netflix, the Motley Crue thing? Not yet. No. Okay. So the reason Motley Crue is so popular, which is why I think you guys can match this, is because the dudes wanted to be like the guys, and the girls wanted to be with the guys. Right. That's your lane. Got <laughs> dude, it? That sounds nice. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you, dude. Yeah. I'll, I'll, so keep up the good work. That's awesome. That sounds nice. That makes me yeah. feel so good. Thank yeah, you for... I feel all like oh, you, bet. you got you yeah. filled our stoke tanks on the pot thank, thank you, you. Dude. <laughs> and that's hard to do because you guys are like at max pass oh but we're frothing now dude i'm really stoked <laughs> stoke st froth yeah frothing hard. so here's the deal question need advice yes uh my daughter is uh, a precocious a three and a half year old and i'm trying to teach her kind of levels of stoke trying to make sure she's kind of carving her own path with her own identity giving her freedom but you know pulling in the reins when i need to so she's kind of come on to a setting up her own crew at preschool oh mm -hmm. what up uh, or her own squad yeah and so you've got your usuals it's a tight crew it's it's tegan it's harlow it's kato and like they're they're a good group 
but <laughs> this is kind of funny. And I don't know if you guys knew this exists. I didn't really know either, but like there's such thing as like baby schmoles and toddler schmoles. Whoa. Oh. Damn. So, does she so, have a schmoll? She's got a schmoll, dude. Oh, dude. What's the schmoll situation? Well, his name's Kevin. Yeah. And he's a little bit of a rabble rouser, but he kind of comes up in her grill a little bit too much. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm trying to teach her to be like, you give him one check, like you get the first one free, right? Hey, please leave me alone. I need my space. I don't like that. Like steady conversation levels. Mm -hmm. But the second time is when she's got to really bring the hammer. Like yeah. you gotta, you gotta let her know. And this is for like life lessons too, right? Yeah. These are little girls we're talking about. So I was just wondering, it's not really a question, but I think you guys feel me on this. Would you would you agree that, or is there any other advice you could give me on how I should help help her kind of boat the schmoll, the toddler schmoll? Yeah, it's it's never too early to boat a schmoll. Um, right. I think it starts early. Yes. Yeah, and dude, I, I think you're right, dude. With the gals, you got to teach them to be like fortified because you know, it's right. a it's a tough path. So if she can learn how to like set solid boundaries at an early age, that'll be good practice for later on. For sure. You should that means so much, JT. I mean it, dog. I love it. Yeah, maybe since she's young, maybe teach her some words or give her kind of a, a script so when the when the kid comes at her kind of aggro, you know, she can just lay it down and be like, you know what, you're being a little bit aggro right now and I'd appreciate if you uh, were mindful of my personal space. And so, I think that'll just throw him off his, you know. And then she says, and peacefully later, dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, and then like a, like a, like a hip, like a, like a 180 turn with like some flair at the end and just like boy bye kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I think all business on the turn, like yeah. on, yeah. on yeah. to the next thing. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Maybe have her watch some like Jennifer Lopez scenes where she kind of gives that attitude. Out of sight with George <sighs> Clooney. <laughs> and like maybe some like oh we just watched that too it's a great movie um <laughs> underrated For good sure. rewatch yeah i'm gonna have to watch that watch that again um, oh and yeah speaking of 90s movies and and also kind of corroborating chad's like growing up we were quoting or he was quoting fast too calling out roman pierce like when he was probably like what seven eight i mean oh, it's real oh yeah dude prodigy yeah it, it, it started, I mean, all that stuff is, that passion was deep at a young age. That's so badass. Has, has your has your daughter started watching Fast and the Furious? You know, I think we're going to be a little ahead of the schedule now that I'm talking to you guys. I, yeah. I had it queued up for maybe like a four-year-old birthday celebration. Oh, dude, but, yeah. But um, we might, what's it, you know what Paul Walker you guys didn't talk about was Timeline. You didn't talk about Timeline. Yeah, what with happened? Gerard Butler. Yes. You know, that, that that movie felt like its budget was maybe a little bit under where it needed to be. Yeah, by like a thousand percent. Yeah. Every every dollar yeah. under. Yeah, it was weak. Just, oh. a, just a quick curveball to see if you guys are paying attention on that one. Good call, JT. Thank you, dog. I read the book. Yeah, the book was great. The book That's was cool. That's what got me fired yeah, up Yeah, Michael Crichton, dude. Man, and, so, and they dropped the ball. They dropped it. Damn. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys. Well, this has been great. It's take your daughter to work day, and I've had my daughter locked in a conference room this whole time, so I better go. Okay. Um, but anyway, well worth it to call you guys because this has been a long time coming. And I'll come down to LA and we'll hang, and I got to see the next show. So get me on the list if it's not too much trouble, all right? Of course. For sure, dog. And dude, that conference room is a good visual for her at this point. Oh, yeah. So she can, like, you know, start to see that she'll be running it. Hell yeah. Right. Whiteboard, whiteboard technique is not something you can't learn too soon. Absolutely. Keep us posted on how the the boking goes too. I will. It's it, it's gonna be it, it's gonna be some stages to it, but I, I will keep you posted. It, this is this is big time. And this I'm gonna is go, early stuff. I'm gonna go gas pedal my dad tonight. So thanks for the uh, move <laughs> the move tutorial. Hey, from what I hear about your dad and your parents, CT, like careful. They're gonna be some fat nuts to step on for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right then you guys keep up the good work i love you both love Talk you too. To you later. thanks guys all right. thanks for calling later. in all right my my foot will probably bounce off my dad's balls like one of those exercise ones he's gonna look at you and he's gonna be like i've been waiting for that your whole life yeah he's like how's your foot feel dude all right so we got some more questions you ready to get into it yes 
What up, Stokers? Real gassed with my current squad, but the only issue is we don't really have any female friends to rage with. Trying to branch out and meet more chicks, but often find I have nothing to say and struggle to strike up a conversation with new people. I'm not the most outgoing person in the world. Any advice for a fellow Stoker? Much love. Uh, I missed the first part. So he, he, he likes his squad. He just wants to be friends with uh, gals. Oh. Um, well, dude, I wouldn't get down on yourself for being not being outgoing. I'm pretty introverted myself, but you, you kind of own that because it, being introverted is pretty cool I think because you're more into yourself and stuff and then when you're able to like offer the gift that you have of like what's going on deep inside people love it that's beautiful yeah so you know just be like yeah I'm a quiet guy but I'll rock your world dude also take a dance class yeah it's loaded with women it's a good workout it's endearing if you suck and even if you don't meet someone then, you'll have this great skill for the rest of your life that'll probably help you meet women. I heard salsa is like changed lives. I did some hip hop classes in high school. Dude, yeah. it was so amazing. Dude. The whole room cheers for you because you're like a goofy dude. Yeah. And then I had dance moves that I used almost exclusively for the next five years. I, I think I've seen those. Yeah, I still use a lot of them. I, uh, I can't, Stoke Nish, just know that when we do our dance videos and stuff, those rehearsals are some of the best times we have. They're grueling. They're grueling, but so much fun. The reps that go into it. It, it brings out a whole new side of yourself that you didn't know you had. And that you're excited to do, like group dance is fun. I heard Mark Maron one time, he's like, when I cried every musical because I can't believe all these adults got together and learned this whole thing. Yeah. And it's true, when you watch like people doing a group performance, there's something like really uh, like life affirming about it. Yeah. And that, that when you, me, and Strider are dancing, it's that same vibe. Oh, it's so much fun. I mean, it, it's tough at first because it's like when you have to learn choreography, it's, it's, um, you're like, how am I going to learn all this shit? But once you start to get it, you, the bond between your dogs is so much deeper. And then the endorphins are flowing and you're just like, this is so much fun. I want to do this like all day. And once the moves get planted into your brain and you memorize them, then you can start to express yourself in the moves. Yeah. And that's where the real fun is. Yeah. All right, dude. Yeah, take a dance class, dog. What's up, Stoke Masters? This is Mike. Huge fan of the pod. It keeps my Stoke tank full when I'm sitting at work. My question is, I saw Mega Babe when I was getting a sick pump at the gym, and I want to know how you would go about picking up babes at the gym. I feel weird about going up to a girl at the gym. I think it's a super aggro move. Wait, where are you? Thanks, dogs, and would love to hear your thoughts. I think... Wait till she's done with her workout, dude. Don't interrupt that sacred flow. And then I would just walk up to her, and your name is Mike. I would just walk up to her and say, hi, I'm Mike. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's see where it goes from there. And then maybe maybe set the tempo when you first see her. You know, don't just come out of nowhere. She'll just be like, she'll be like, where'd you come from? Like, that's, that was weird. Maybe like when you see her at first, give her like a little nod and a smile. Just cordial you know just like what's up and then just crank out some like fast sprints that she can see so she can know that you're not there to pick up chicks you're there to get after it and you're there to get a full-on workout and then make your approach and be like i saw you doing those curls great form and then show that you're comfortable with yourself you know be masculine but also don't be afraid to do some um uh Kegel exercises, you know, to be like, I'm a, I'm an all around good dude. Yeah. Wear gloves. Even when you do legs. Yeah. And a backwards hat. Yeah. So you're cool. Yeah. Maybe a scarf. My dogs. What up? There's this girl I've been seeing for a while now and things are pretty serious between us. We've been married for almost six years and have two kids. She is my ride or die and an all around babe. However, recently I've noticed there's one thing standing between us and it has me worried about our relation. No matter how hard I try to get her stoked on David Goggins, she appears uninterested. I feel like he is a great source of motivation, a model of the best way to attack our goals and live up to our full potential. For over a year now, I've told her stories of this David Goggins guy. I've offered to read his new book aloud to, her unborn, to our unborn son in the womb so my wife could also hear about an absolute legend. And my last attempt to get her interested was when I sent her the link to the Joe Rogan podcast where Goggins shares his story for two hours, but she declined to listen. I feel like I'm at a crossroads here and I could really use some input on how to conclude this struggle. I see there's only, I see there only being two options. Make one final grand attempt to garner her interest or surrender on this endeavor and, continues to be, and continue to be a goggins field Stoke squad of one in my house. Which, which path do you recommend I seek? 
And is there a third or even fourth option that I may not even be seeing? I have a great appreciation for your guys' grind on the pod in life. Keep stoking. And Goggins is intense. And um, I think you just got to keep working them in. Would Goggins give up? No. He'd keep be, going. He'd be like, I built this motherfucker. That's Robbins, I thought. Damn it. But Goggins would say something probably not far from that. He's, he said something like, Goggins, I created that. Right. I used to kill roaches, but I created Goggins. He used to kill roaches? He was like a termite guy. Oh, okay. That's a good job. <laughs> Dude, you should do a podcast with him. Maybe we should play out that scene where he's like, he's like, yeah, I used to kill roaches and I was overweight. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, it sounds like a good job. And you were eating well? You were having fun? Hey, do you want to play it out? Yeah, sure. Hey, how you doing, Mr. Goggins? Good to meet you. Good. Just did a 20-mile 20, 20 run out in the desert, and uh, I'm going to crank out about 1,000 pull-ups right now. Ah, wasn't that run hard on your knees? What? Was that run hard on your knees? No. Oh, wow. That's cool. You you think about pain in the knee? Yeah, yeah. My knee hurts when I run, so I have to take it easy sometimes. Well, just run through it. Run through that pain. Pain brings you to new levels of consciousness. No, I'm good. I feel super conscious. What? I, I, I don't feel like I need to run 100 miles to improve my consciousness what do you do i'm an exterminator i kill roaches and stuff what yeah i, I kill roaches like you know and you like that yeah it's a good job yeah you're, you're insecure i don't think so about what you killing roaches you kind of a fat boy oh well <laughs> yeah i'm a little bit overweight um i wouldn't say i'm fat but I'm, yeah, I should probably lose some weight. You know weight. what you need to do? You need to get in touch with pain, okay? Suffering is the way to total happiness. You know why I'm happy? Because I built this motherfucker, okay? I'm Goggins now. I, I do. You're awesome, but I think I'm pretty happy. I have, like, a nice house. I like my wife. When I did my 100-mile run, I was pissing and shitting myself. I was pissing blood and shitting myself. And my wife said, don't finish. You have 20 miles left. And I said, shut up. And I did it. That's cool, man. All right, I gotta go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that'll be good. No, I think that'll work. I think that'll work for sure. <laughs> yeah, dude. I think like I tried to get my ex to be into Joe Rogan, and I played her a clip where him and that Jesse Itzler guy talk about happiness, and I thought it was a very compelling spiel. And then um, two minutes into it, my ex just goes, "Is he stoned?" And I was like. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, my God. On camera? I was like, yeah. And she couldn't get into it after that. Really? Yeah. She just thought he looked so sloppy. Yeah. Some people just aren't going to get it. I think I was stoned when she said that, too. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, as long as you like Goggins, that's cool. Yeah, get, join an yeah. online group. There's got to be people to talk. I mean, go get on a Reddit thread. There's got to yeah. be... 20 about them. Maybe there's someone that she's, maybe she's trying to get you into Oprah and she's proven unsuccessful at that. So maybe be like, hey, I want to hear more Oprah. So you guys can, you know, link up. Compromise. Dude, Chad and JT, hello. 12 years ago, I met the most beautiful woman of my dreams when I was at a summer camp. I was 12 and she was 11. So I was already taking a big risk with falling in love with someone younger than me. We hit it off and eventually exchanged AIM screen names. Things were really heating up. We spent our summers playing dodgeball and eating popsicles. You could say the stoke meter was at an all-time high when camp was around the corner. Eventually, we got too old for camp and we both went our separate ways. Um, the advice I'm seeking from you, bros, is what do I say to her? Because he recently saw on Instagram that she's now single. It's been a long time since we've talked, and I'm ready to rekindle our summer love. Thanks, bros. It's been a while since they talked. Yeah. Is she single? She's single. Just start reminiscing about summer camp. Yeah. What was what was your favorite thing about summer camp? Ask her a question. Yeah, just uh, you know, talk about the good memories. Make make sure you sort of like recreating or helping her remember those fun times get her nostalgic yeah. yeah so you can she can reflect on that and you'd be like wow i want to hang out with that guy again yeah and i'm sure she'll remember things and then share them with you and then you yeah. guys are you got some momentum 
maybe send like a a photo of like something that's hilarious from camp and be like do you remember this that was hilarious yeah when like joey tripped over that stump what's up chad and jt i got what oh, i wait, think I, I'm, sorry i gotta do the manscape dad hit it guys this podcast we're just gonna step away for a sec this podcast is brought to you by our dogs at manscaped i'm rocking the tea thank you aaron for getting whoo um Guys, Manscaped, these dudes are looking out for your nut region, okay? I'm talking about your pubes, guys. They want to make sure they look good so then when people see them, they're going to be like, wow, not only does that guy have a nice dong, but it's well-maintained because he manscapes, and he manscapes with the dudes at Manscaped. And dudes, it can be tough down there, you know? You take some trimmers down there, you could nick your nuts, you know? You could get bleeding and stuff, and you don't want to do that. It hurts. You don't want to hurt your jewels, you know? That's why Manscaped brings you quality trimmers that are safe you know so you don't have to worry about nicking your balls all you have to worry about is trimming them well and you will trim them well because it's good technology and it's epic they also have like you know ball deodorant cologne uh shampoo and like body wash you know all kinds of stuff that help you become like a real kind of old uh old school gentlemanly dude but also modern so it's the best of both worlds hell yeah their uh, their perfect package 2.0 kit features the lawnmower 2.0 with skin safe technology. Trimmer will not nick or snag your nuts. It's also 100% waterproof and shock resistant. Do not use the strain trimmer on your face that you use on your balls. I learned that the hard way. Precision tools for your family jewels. Your balls will thank you. Trust me, mine have thanked me, and they're pumped. Get 20% off, free shipping, and a free travel bag with the code Go Deep at Manscaped.com. Boom. Thank you, Manscaped. What up, Chad and JT? I got what I think is a serious dilemma. A few months ago, I was getting it on with this girl and everything went wrong. She was on top of me riding and tried to stand up to adjust my dick and tried to stand up to adjust and my dick ended up slipping out. She fell down and crushed my dong. Oh. This was immense pain. It was swollen and bruised for about a month and I was too scared to go see a doctor. This has unfortunately come back to bite me as now my dong is clearly scarred from the incident. My penis functions completely fine, but it is bent pretty bad. I've been scared to hook up with another girl and have her look at my dick with disgust. What do you guys think is the best way to tell a girl about this before a hookup? Thanks boys, love the pod. First off, why doesn't he go to a doctor? Yeah, don't be afraid to see a doctor, guys. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah, you're just going to get... Yeah, they're not judging. They're just there to help. Yeah. Go to a doctor. Dude, I would say you're all right because 97% of penises are weird. Yeah. Yours is solid, dude. It's still working. You're good, bro. Even if it wasn't working, your mouth's working. So you're still good, bro. And also, dude, you know, yours is going to stand out. She's going to remember your dong. It's not going to be some generic, you know, just rocket. It's going to be like a Owen Wilson nose dong. And if you guys like each other a lot, her brain will make her think she likes the dong. Yeah. Because she'll like you. When she sees it, she's going to say one of two things. Wow, that's a cool and interesting dong or two. Go see a doctor. For sure, the first one. Yeah. Yo, what's up, Chad and JT? I'm Maddie, and this is my first time writing in, so I'm a little m nervous, but mainly with some dank anticipation for advice. I just turned 22 and wanted to have a big old bash and celebration, but when it came down to it, I realized I didn't have any bros to kick it with. I didn't make a lot of friends in high school because where I'm from, most people wanted to do drugs or got pregnant, and I was trying to escape that fate by dedicating my time to school and sports. Mad stoked for that because it got me into college, but it did have some minor setbacks. I went to college for two years before dropping out and moving back home recently, so most of my college buds are far away and all focused on their own stoke, which I support, but sometimes it feels like I'm out here waiting in the waters all by myself. What advice can you give me for searching for some new bros? I'm a totally loyal friend and would love to hang with, to have some long-term long compadres to kick it with occasionally, but it's so hard to find a group of bros who are open to new additions. Uh, well, first off, mad respect for uh, you know staying on the path of studying and all that kind of stuff for and sure thank you you know trying to just work on yourself good job um i would uh i would pursue your interests or your hobbies and then find friends that way whether it be at the gym or you know paintballing or stuff you know just get engaged in activities and get out there get out in the world and just meet people and then you'll 
acquire your squad that way. And dude, just be nice. Like guys want to be friends with girls. Yeah. Most of us are scared of girls most of the time. So if you compliment us, like we'll die for you. Yeah. yeah. Just say something nice to him. The guy's going to want to be your friend. Oh, for sure. Just be nice and yeah. Ask him what they like. Um, what up, Stokers? My name is Taryn, but you can call me Chad. What up, Chad and JT? Love you both. So basically, my stoke tank is either full or empty, depending on the day, because of my constant predicament. The thing is, I'm seriously dating this girl, and I really do love her, and she's extremely caring, which I fuck with, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Hashtag alpha. But I constantly find myself feeling like it isn't right, and I need to break it off, because she is very protective possessive and isn't okay with me going out without her i really love this girl but i just can't shake this feeling that i haven't lived all of my rage days yet i really need your help guys should i settle down with this lovely lady or should i keep on paddling out of the atlantic and search for a fish in the pacific if you know what i mean i appreciate the help bros and i absolutely fucking love the pod stay up and keep changing lives with much drunk and love taryn i'd say you gotta really figure out whether you want to play with that dog i'm sorry I'd, I'd say you really gotta figure out whether it's really right or not because if it's if it's not right and you just keep dragging it out um that's probably just going to cause more pain down the road i agree and you got to figure out what you really want in this situation it sounds like you kind of know the answer um but if you really love her and you want to you know create a relationship with her then do that but just figure out which path you want to take yeah I think it sounds like he's ready to maybe move on. Yeah, you know? that's what it sounds like to me too. Because it's a crazy thing to say, but I think sometimes wanting to rage is like a secondary emotion. Yeah. Like the first thing is that you're not feeling fulfilled because he doesn't feel like he can express himself to this person. And, and because of that, he wants to rage. Yeah. Because he, he needs to get that kind of that fulfillment elsewhere. Mm hmm. I think, uh, yeah, dude, and, and if she doesn't communicate the way you communicate with, you know, find someone who speaks in your love language, like, because you're, because it's a chill language. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, you're, you're speaking French, she's speaking Spanish, but you guys can't learn the other language. Maybe it's time to, you know, go back to France. Maybe try you know, taking a break, too, and just being like, just sort of get a sense of what not being in the relationship is like, and be like, is this really what I wanted? Then you can really decide for yourself. Although that could be tough, you know, taking a break, you know, what's No, it's worth a what's try. Gonna happen, but switch it up. Yeah, you know, test out the waters. You're young, experimentation, figure it out. Figure it out. But really figure it out. Like think on it and like really make a choice. But I think you know what the choice is, my dog. There's someone out there who's a better fit. Chad and JT, my buddy and I had a crazy weekend getaway, and long story short, we ended up double teaming a girl off Tinder. While it was happening, my buddy pulled out his phone and took some videos to prove to our dogs that we actually did it. I was really hoping that he would delete the videos so that we would keep what happened in Vegas, in Vegas, but he insisted that he save them so that we can watch them and laugh at a later date. I feel like the possibility of them getting leaked and ruining our careers far outweighs any benefits of keeping them for a laugh about something we both know that happened. I asked him to delete them and he kind of brushed me off. Do you think it's a good idea to keep the videos or to delete them? I don't like, I don't think any good will keep, will come out of keeping them and I don't know what to do. What do you think your dog, Dan? Dude, lay down the hammer. Delete them. Yeah, this needs to get fucking deleted, dude. Take his phone and delete the video. Mm -hmm. This girl was nice enough to indulge you guys in some double love, expecting your discretion at minimum. You got to delete these. You got to lay down the hammer with this guy. Maybe take some karate classes before so you're prepared. What up, oh wise ones? My boys call me Bridzy. I have a most urgent question for the king's if sensuality i think you might of but that's what's up let me preface this by saying that i play baseball in college jt i know you're a big advocate of thinking about baseball when boning to increase bonage time my problem is when i think about a nice line drive or turning two it makes me even more horny and liable to bust <laughs> you dirty dog any suggestions on other things i could think of when doing with the dance with no pants to last longer um yeah i just think dude i think about furniture so that's so much smarter. Yeah. yeah. I think about furniture. We'll co ottomans, couches, bunk beds. No love seats. Beanie bags. Bean bags. Yeah, I think about... I think about... Nice furniture. I think about the couch in college that I had that 
ass clown pissed on repeatedly and that was just it sucked but it was where we bonded yeah think about that when you're boning yeah i think about this like uh a uh, big stuffed animal I had that I used to hump the fuck out of. And then I just come. Fa- oh, we're talking about not coming. My bad. <laughs> right. Howdy. Paul Walker or Tom Cruise? Who you got? Oh, fuck, dude. Yeah, it's like they both make me happy. So I was going to be like, Paul Walker makes me happier, but they both make me happy. So I, I don't know. But there's something about Paul with his his like essence where you just feel good. Whereas with Tom, it's like, it's his intensity, his intensity. You're like, all right, I need to get to work, but I love the work I'm about to do. So, I mean, I gotta go with Paul. I gotta go with Paul. What up, Chad? I don't have much time. So I'm gonna get to the point. I have a little bit of a controversy going on here because I have, no, let's skip this one. This guy just says that too many gals like him. <laughs> and I think he's trying to I think he's trying to get our goat. Sam Lasore. Yeah, nice try. He's trying to get us. You know, we know you're a beast. Yeah, thanks. We know. You got me. He got me a little. Darn it. Alright. Can I pee real quick? Mm-hmm. Hey, Stoker. So uh, JT's going to the John right now to release his dragon. It's going to go. Yeah, that was him or his dragon. I don't even know what, but it's just a long time with Chad right now. Some solo time. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hope uh, you guys are living well. I'm just um, looking at JT's coconut water right now, and I'm like, damn, humanity is crazy, right? Whoa. Like we decided we were going to make water out of coconuts. Who even decided that, you know? Like, was it Mr. Aquafina? I wonder what that guy's like, you know? Do you think he knew with his last name, Aquafina, that he was going to be like a water guy? And what does he think about plastic, you know? How did we even come up with plastic? Who decided, like, who came out and was like, yo, we got to make plastic? Definitely wasn't like a surfer because he wasn't going to be like, what, are you going to put that in the ocean? Forget you, dude. You know, when are we going to come up with something besides plastic? What's going to be besides plastic that's not like metal? Maybe it's just like, I don't know. Maybe it's jizz. Maybe jizz can be used for something other than, I mean, it already creates life. It can also create receptacles for, you know, our liquids. I mean, it's gross, but like in Ace Ventura, when nature calls, they use bat droppings for you know pottery and shit and like cups and it's like dude guano is legit why can't jizz do the same thing sorry to get gross with jizz but i think it's useful and i think it creates life and jt's coming back after draining his dong how was how'd it go i was good what did we say about jizz oh i was just i just went on a tangent about what are we going to use to replace plastic that's better than like metal and stuff and I thought maybe, like, we'll find some uses with jizz. Right. Chad, who is your beef of the week? My beef of the week is uh, with myself for how susceptible I am to being get taken into a cult. Um, I get passion. I get heat in the heat of the moment. You know, I'm, we, when we were reading Amos's book last week, when they were talking about, like, recruiting methods that some people use, how they, like, dive deep and connect with them on an emotional level. And then they, I'm like, damn, dude, that could be me. I could totally get taken into a cult. But then I'm kind of ADD, so I'd be like, I'm over this like three months later. But it's kind of with myself, dude. You know, it's like myself, why am I so susceptible to being put in a cult? Like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to join Scientology for like a month at some point because they're going to be like, hey, we uh, figured out how to like make you tan better. And I'd be like, what? And I'd be like, in. And I'd be like, oh, fuck. So they're I smart. Know. I mean, they engage you like where they know you'll listen. They know my weak points. Yeah. They're like, you want to saute yourself? We can tell. And I'm like, yes. And they're like, well, they can promise you infinite sun. Well, look at Miss Scavage's tan. And they'd be like, it's nice. It's golden. How's he do that? Scientology. And I'd be like, all right, I got to join. 
Yeah. But you know what you want. I do know what I want. You just got to find the right method to get there. Yeah. But it's already happening. Well, I got to say this. I may be a beef, but I'm also excited for the journey. I'm not too dead set in my ways. I'm flexible. I'm like freaking Gumby, you know? Right. You're like aware of who you are and you're going to like work on it, but you're also just going to enjoy the ride. Yeah. I'm going to join lots of cults. As long as there's no Kool-Aid, I'm good. Yeah. It doesn't have to be your last cult. Just because you're in a cult doesn't mean it has to be the last cult that you're ever in. Yeah. Yeah. What's your beef? My beef of the week is with a Pitchfork review of Tempered Trap's first album, Conditions, from 2009. I remember reading this review years ago, and it made me mad then, and I revisited it again, and it fucking still pisses me off. All right, Tempered Trap album, it's got like the song Sweet Disposition on it, Fader, Love Lost. It's good stuff. What the Tempered Trap, this is the review from Pitchfork. What the Temper Trap do devastatingly well is drape post office party mistake hookup tackiness in the lofty imagery of global struggle. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you even talking about, dude, writing this review? No one could ever think that listening to that. You must have just already been thinking that. And then he says to start the next paragraph So you can just picture Mondagi standing on a rooftop on a mountaintop for sweet disposition, his hair blowing in Bono, Bono's wind. But remember, ladies, some insincere sketchball with limited imagination is going to use this to try to get you to have sex with him. Sex in italics. What is he talking about? Why is he just assuming this guy's a sketchball? This guy could be a good guy. He likes the temper trap. Doesn't make him a sketchball. He wants to have sex with this girl. He might like her. This guy must have a personal vendetta. What's going on in this Pitchfork guy's life? Yeah. He's acting like an asshole. He's not even talking about the music. He's like creating all these scenes. I just, I always wonder like, do reviewers understand the impact they have? It's like, they just like, oh, here's my review. And it's like, what are you doing, dude? Why don't you get your affairs in order before you call out some dude like that? who's just trying to make beautiful music. All right, dude. Who is your babe of the week? My babe of the week is Keanu... Reeves. Uh, guys, John Wick 3 is coming out soon. Uh, I watched John Wick and John Wick 2 recently, and he is just a fucking beast. He's perfect for that role, you know? And um, he's just a great... I mean, he's a great dude all around. I, I, I feel like we've done Keanu Reeves before, but I just want to give him a shout-out again because John Wick 3 is coming out, but John Wick 1 is epic. Um, there's lots of savagery going on in there. He's... I like his sort of like mentality. He's like a quiet guy. He does his business, but if someone crosses him, he's going to fuck him up. And uh, I just love it. And I think that's sort of how Keanu lives, you know? Like he's uh, he stays in the shadows a little bit. He rides the subway, but he's also a very caring, giving person, very charitable, has done a lot of good deeds in his time, and he's also made killer movies and sort of shown us what he's made of, like Bill and Ted, Speed, Matrix, um... Yeah, something's got to give. He was great as a doctor in that. And then he was really good. Yeah, like him and Diane Keaton. You're like they have chemistry. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I want to hang out with Keanu so bad. He's awesome. Yeah, uh, dude, I saw him. He's on the cover of like GQ this month or something, and it says yeah. Keanu Reeves is officially in his icon stage. Yeah, and I couldn't be happier for him. I'm so pumped. Yeah, because people were giving a lot of shit, him uh, a lot of shit during the Matrix days. They knocked him around for years. Yeah, like I'd be in in like different film classes and they'd be talking about what a bad actor is i'm like then yeah. why do we want to keep watching him yes exactly he met everyone loves him still he was great in parenthood he was great in bill and ted he was yeah. great in speed he's been good for 30 years yeah keanu consistency is something they cannot deny and it's time he gets the recognition he deserves he's a beast i love watching him keep putting him in movies hollywood He's a babe. His top five movies can go toe to toe with like Denzel's top five movies in terms of if you're going to a desert island and you just got to bring five with you. Yeah. Top five Keanu, you're going to have a nice time on that island. Yeah. Oh, and I got to mention Point Break too. Oh, dude. I mean, that goes without saying. That's the, we're going to miss some of these things because he's yeah. done so many great ones. Back, yeah, but back, Point Break might be the best. Back when he was young, dumb, and full of cum. Johnny Utah, dude. I take the skin off chicken. Yeah. He's a beast. So uh, Keanu, you're a babe. Thank you so much for being you and keep doing it, dude. And... uh if you ever want a paintball or something, let me know. Absolutely. And he gave a big chunk of his salary on the later matrixes to the wire work people and the stunt coordinators and the martial arts instructors. Because oh, yeah. he was like, they made the movie happen. Yeah. God. Great guy. He's awesome. Dude, I'm doing an actor too for my babe of the week. My babe of the week is Daniel Day-Lewis. Nice. Dude. 
pure commitment to the craft of acting. Like it really seems like he's just like accidentally won some Oscars. He's like, oh yeah, they decided to give me an Oscar for this, but I just really wanted to play Bill the Butcher or Lincoln. Like he's, and he's so committed in all those parts. And I know he like stays in character off camera, you know, to a degree, but that's awesome. Like he cares so much about acting. And then I think we've talked about it before. He took, he took a break from acting to like, you know, spiritually re-nourish himself to find his passion again for it, to really think about what it is to be an actor. And in that time, he taught a guy who made shoes, a cobbler, how to act, and the cobbler gave him cobbling lessons. And I heard that guy is still a working actor in Europe. That's awesome. And now Daniel Day Lewis knows how to make shoes. What's he doing now? I mean, I don't know, he might be done, but he might come back and do another PTA movie or Scorsese. Like he only works with the best directors. He's in some movies that suck, but they're all like hugely ambitious. Yeah. And then dude, in the name of the father, him and Peter Postlewaite. Some critics said Peter Postlewaite's the only guy to ever put gloves on Daniel Day-Lewis, like acting in a scene with him, like be as close to as good as him. And he's just incredible in that. Last of the Mohicans, it was gonna be my quote of the week. He's staring at the girl who he's about to lose to like a rival tribe under a waterfall. The men are coming in on him with their axes. It takes place in like the 1860s or 70s or something. And then he just looks at her and goes, you stay alive, I will find you. It's a great line. It's very romantic. Yeah. I was with my girlfriend at Whole Foods. Every time she walked away, I grabbed her. I was like, you stay alive. I will find you. It was a lot. The guy checking us out was a little turned off. Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If guys were really coming with hatchets for her, I hope I would step up. But I got fears about it. I think you would. Thank you, dude. Yeah. I hope I die nobly. Help her get out of there. That'd be sweet. That's why I like a strong girl. Because I know she'll be able to get away. Yeah. You know? Do you sort of yearn for like situations like that where you you know you have to step up? I do kind of want to be tested, but yeah. at the same time I'm terrified of being tested. Yeah. But I but I kind of want to know. Maybe that's my personality type, ENFP with a T subletter, turbulent type. Is there a way to simulate that? Yeah. If you got the cash. You know, that's the unfair thing. Maybe if we make when well, when we make a lot of money, maybe I'll set up like a kidnapping. You're a beast. For you. Please do. You're a beast on multiple levels there because you're assuming a lot of good stuff and I think it's going to make you right. Dude, who is your... Daniel Day-Lewis, you're a beast, bro. Dude, who is your legend of the week? My legend of the week is this... Uh, so I flew to uh, see my mom recently. She moved to Santa Fe a couple of years ago. Big ups, Miss Kroger. What up? What up, mom? She's always so nice to spend time with. She's the best. Hey, mom, I love you. Um... And uh, on the plane, I was sitting next to this guy who's a jewelry guy. He's from Israel, this Israeli jewelry guy. And he's telling me all about how to lose a tail. And he's like, I'm in the jewelry business, okay? And, uh, you know, it's dangerous. People, you, you're carrying around millions of dollars worth of diamonds, and people are going to, they want to steal them. So he is like, I was just sitting on this plane and the whole time. He's like, all right, you got a tail, okay? You think you have a tail. Someone's coming behind you. What do you do? You're in a mall, you go to a mall, you go to a mall, okay? And then you take the escalator, you go up, and you get up to the top, and you think, oh, I'm confused, wait, I went to the wrong floor. You go back down the escalator. If the guy goes up and down with you, you have a tail. Whoa. And I'm like, oh, do you like take out your gun? Like, what do you do? He's like, I don't carry a gun, I carry diamonds, okay? I carry diamonds. I call the cops, and I say, there's a guy with a gun. Cops come right away. They figure it out. Amazing. And then, He's like, he's like, you're, you're driving, you're on the freeway. You think you have a tail, what do you do? Most people would speed up. They'd speed up, they'd keep going. No, you slow down. Because if you go down to 50 miles per hour in the freeway and this guy stays with you, and doesn't get mad and goes blows by you, you got a tail. I like what he's doing. Yeah, and then you call the cops and you say, there's a guy following me, he has a gun. You figure it out. You call the cops, say this dude has a gun, and then you keep your jewelry. Nice. Which I was, it, which was interesting. You know, you you just you never really think about that. He sells diamonds, and you know, I'm like, wow, you guys have to go through like courses and like you know training for security and stuff like every year because people are always trying to. It's a dangerous business. Lift your stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's high stakes. So shout out to that dude. Thank you for teaching me about tails because. Um. I'm stoked to finally get a tail and like figure out what to do. Nice. 
Who's your legend? My legend of the week is a YouTube video creator named Mixed Molly Whoppery. He does breakdowns on a, a combat sports athletes, like mixed martial artists and boxers. Dude, they're like 20 minute videos with great accompanying visuals. And he has an awesome like Long Island, New York accent. And he's like, Khabib Nagurdamanov doesn't like to take shit. So when Conor McGregor insisted on saying it was a business, Khabib insisted on saying, no, you don't fuck with my family. And that's like his commentary, but it's like really enthralling. And it's actually super accurate to what's going on. And so he's like funny and insightful. And I just don't know how he pounds out all these videos. Like he's got like 40, 20 minute videos. I've been watching those instead of movies lately. And like, it's just, uh, it's as fun. That's it's like awesome. super rewarding. And the guy just works so hard. So I'd love to give him some attention. Check out his breakdowns if you're into that stuff. Mixed Molly Whoppery. All right, dude, what is your quote of the week? My quote of the week is from George Clooney. I couldn't find like the actual quote, but I remember watching him on Inside the Actor's Studio. And one thing that really resonated with me is he's like, hard work beats talent every time. Nice. And I was like, that's a good point. You know, so many people have talent. Talent's everywhere. But if you're the guy working the hardest, you're going to win. Nice. So shout out to George Clooney. Because he's, he was like, he's being honest. He's like, I don't have as much talent as a lot of guys around me, but I worked hard. And I was fucking Batman. George we've talked about all the greats today yeah so uh you guys remember to cultivate your talent don't just let it sit what's your quote my quote of the week is from uh, David Brooks on the Tyler Cowen podcast conversations with Tyler he was uh, talking about how his next book uh will probably be about commitment and how we make four big commitments in our life to family friends uh vocation and uh philosophy and faith i think that's what they were i might be messing that up and then the what our life basically gets graded on is how well we fulfill those commitments and then he says what's my definition of commitment it is falling in love with something and then building a structure of behavior around it for those moments when love falters nice i thought that was very well said it's a good conversation between those two that's it dog that was awesome yeah stokers thank you so much for tuning in for episode 67 Eight. 68 of right? going deep with chad and jt thank you dudes um yeah keep writing in keep writing reviews those reviews are dank and uh thank you for being stokers and stay stoked dudes stay stoked stokers see you next week later dudes that was fun yeah I think it'll be good. I was really excited. If you need advice, 